Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, saluting Earth Day on April 22nd with an ongoing commitment to help offset carbon emissions with sustainable harvesting of Missouri forests. Details at choosewood.com. From the St. Louis Public Radio newsroom, this is The Gateway. It's Thursday, November 12th. I'm Wayne Pratt. Economists say women in St. Louis and throughout the country are losing more jobs than men during the pandemic. They are also feeling pressure to stay home to care for their families. Our income was cut in half, and we have three kids in three different private schools, and you just stop and try and figure out, okay, how are we gonna how are we gonna manage this? St. Louis Public Radio's Corinne Ruff speaks with women in the region about why they are putting careers on hold and how that could affect their futures. Intensive care unit beds are becoming more scarce at hospitals throughout Missouri because of the surge in COVID-19. The state yesterday reported another 4,000 coronavirus cases and two dozen more deaths. It is also reporting more than 2,100 hospitalizations. ICU capacity at hospitals is down to 32 percent throughout the state. The increase in cases comes as researchers in St. Louis and worldwide are trying to understand how the virus infects different human organs and tissues. As St. Louis Public Radio's Shayla Farzan reports, new research from Washington University suggests the cornea is resistant to coronavirus infection. The human eye has a clear protective layer known as the cornea, and some viruses like herpes can infect it, causing vision problems. WashU researchers wondered whether the coronavirus could also grow in the cornea. So they took slices of the tissue from deceased human donors and tried to infect it with the coronavirus in the lab. WashU virologist Jonathan Miner says the virus was not able to infect or grow in the cornea at all. That argues that the cornea is less likely to be a route of entry for the virus. But Miner says it's possible the coronavirus could infect other eye tissues, like tear ducts. I'm Shayla Farzan, St. Louis Public Radio. Arts organizations throughout the region are still making tough decisions related to the pandemic. The Two Hill Performing Arts Center at the University of Missouri-St. Louis is losing its director and cutting 14 jobs. University officials say the Two Hill canceled many performances because of the outbreak, severely cutting income. That led to the elimination of director John Catanaugh's position. The Two Hill is supported by its own revenue, but UMSL officials say they are now focusing on students. The university is affected by state budget cuts and must trim $21 million in spending. Pop Samples is chief of staff for the office of the chancellor. He says UMSL has a clear priority. How to teach courses and and maintain uh, employees doing that and those functions to uh, recruit, uh, retain, and graduate students. And uh, everything else is, is secondary. Samples says university officials hope to reopen the Two Hill for shows next year after coronavirus restrictions are lifted. The St. Louis Coro Fellowship Program relaunches next fall in collaboration with the University of Missouri-St. Louis. The Leadership Training Initiative is designed to boost racial equity in all fields. St. Louis Public Radio's Andrea Henderson reports. For nearly 50 years, the Coro Fellowship Program has been placing fellows within local organizations, government entities, nonprofits, and other businesses. The program opens doors for future executives to build an equitable community through leadership. Paul Sorensen is the interim co-director of UMSL's Community Innovation and Action Center. He says the program can help place more people of color in leadership roles. I think this program can add a great level of focus and talent into tackling these issues, but it's going to have to do so behind the organizations who are already doing this work. The program aims to raise $350,000 to support programming, fees, and fellow stipends. I'm Andrea Henderson, St. Louis Public Radio. Numbers from the Federal Reserve show more than 2 million women have left the workforce since January. Economists say women have been hit hard during the pandemic, losing more jobs and taking on more responsibilities at home than men. That could hurt women's careers for years to come. St. Louis Public Radio's Corinne Ruff spoke with women in the region about how they are dealing with the pressure to take care of their families while stepping back from the workforce. 
Melanie Golly never envisioned herself as a stay-at-home mom. She's worked as a cheesemonger at a grocery store in St. Louis County for 16 years. But instead of helping people pick out fancy wheels of cheese for cocktail parties, now she spends most of her days helping her five-year-old son, Enzo, with virtual kindergarten. How many purple plants are there? Use your finger to count. Mom. Yeah, take that out of your mouth, please. Mom. Gully says her son needs constant attention to make sure he's on track with his lessons and not crawling under the table or trying to lock the cat in the closet. And that means she can't go back to work, even though her employer needs her. Gully has health obstacles keeping her home, too. The drug regimen she's on to treat her cancer has left her immunocompromised, and COVID-19 cases are spiking across the St. Louis region. With her son working in the background, Golly gets emotional, talking about the pressure she feels to hold everything else together while her husband works full-time from home. It just feels like I take care of everybody, <laughs> and there's not much time for myself. And some days that's easier, and some days it's more challenging. On good days, Golly loves that she gets to spend more time seeing her son make progress, and her husband steps in when she hits a breaking point. But like women all over the country, she's stuck in this position of putting her career on hold to help her family during the pandemic. In September alone, 865,000 women left the U.S. workforce, four times more than men. Oksana Lukina, a research officer at the St. Louis Federal Reserve, says this economic downturn is hitting women much harder than previous ones. We know that employment losses were largest in occupations that required personal contact, such as retail or you know, other personal services. And women actually account for 75% of employment in high contact occupations. So the nature of the shock was really different this time around. Lukina says after daycares closed and schools went virtual, many women couldn't do their jobs remotely, and it's likely some chose to leave work to take care of their kids. She says the issue with so many women staying home now is that their long-term careers will take a hit, and they may decide it's not worth going back to work at all. If you're unemployed, you're losing your skills relative to those members of your cohort that remains employed. So what this basically means is that when you are to re-enter, your wage is going to be substantially smaller. The pandemic has been especially devastating for women living in poverty and women of color. Leslie Gill, president of Rung for Women, says that makes her organization a critical resource. It aims to rebuild St. Louis's middle class by helping women make more money and stable careers. Gill says right now she's seeing a lot of single mothers put their families at risk because they have to put food on the table. You've created a recipe for disaster. So domestic violence is a child abuse and neglect cases are way up. And, you know, it just creates this cycle of trauma and devastation that it will take probably 10 years for families to recover from. Rung for Women's program officially launches early next year, but Gill has offered some career coaching services in the meantime to women like Laura Thiel. She lost her job this summer as an interior designer with more than 25 years of experience. The third layoff in a decade was like a gut punch to her confidence. Our income was cut in half, and we have three kids in three different private schools, and you just stop and try and figure out, okay, how are we going to manage this? Thiel immediately started searching for jobs, but there was nothing out there. Plus, someone had to keep the kids occupied, and her husband works full-time, so that fell on her. Without many options, Thiel decided to start her own interior design business. And as soon as I kind of made that decision in my head that this is this is the time, you know, this is the opportunity, and, and this is when I need to do it, then my mindset just changed immediately, and so much of that anxiety was gone. Things are slow so far, and she hasn't been able to dedicate as much time as she'd like to getting the business off the ground. But Thiel says she feels relieved to be investing in herself instead of worrying about when she'll find a stable job again. I'm Corinne Ruff, St. Louis Public Radio. Our Maria Altman edited that report. Shula Newman is the executive editor of St. Louis Public Radio. Music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. I'm Wayne Pratt. I'm off tomorrow. Sarah Fenton will be filling in. From the St. Louis Public Radio Newsroom, this has been The Gateway.
Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, saluting Earth Day on April 22nd with an ongoing commitment to help offset carbon emissions with sustainable harvesting of Missouri forests. Details at ChooseWood.com.